Hello and welcome to this video webinar on breaking down large goals. My name is Taylor Shembri Much and I will be guiding you through this video. This webinar is one of a three part series geared towards post secondary students with attentional concerns. The other two webinars in the series focus on establishing routines and time management. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge that the content for this presentation has been adapted with permission from a pre-existing intervention group titled More Than Just Making Lists, which is an adult ADHD intervention group. This group was originally created by a registered psychologist named Dr. Michael Zwierce in an effort to combat the lack of services available for adults with ADHD. So I'd like to give a big thank you to Dr. Zwierce for allowing me to utilize his content and put a post-secondary spin on it. In this video, we are going to be discussing how to break down large goals. To do this, we're first going to discuss camp goals and what they are. Then we will discuss how to break down your goals by creating sub goals with some specific ticks, tips on how to enact those goals. We will also go over two specific examples, one for writing essays and one for studying exams. The term CAMP describes an acronym that is used to help guide goal setting. CAMP goals are very similar to SMART goals for those of you who might be more familiar with that terminology. The C in the term CAMP stands for clear and concrete. This refers to what you are going to accomplish. When describing what you are going to accomplish, it's important to be very clear and very detailed. Instead of setting a goal of doing better this semester, you can set a goal of having improved time management. But an even better goal might be submitting all of my writing assignments a day ahead of time. Being very clear and concrete about your goals makes it easier to achieve them because you know exactly what they are and what you do need to do in order to achieve them. This brings us to our next point, the A. A stands for action-based and achievable. This refers to how you will accomplish your goal. In the previous example, I mentioned doing better in school. However, there are a number of different ways to achieve this goal. Even for the more specific goal of improving time management, there are a number of different ways you can achieve this. You can do it by handing in your assignments on time, by arriving on time to all of your classes, or by scheduling regular study time so that you stay on top of things throughout the semester. It's important to be very clear about how you are going to go about achieving your goal. The M in the acronym stands for meaningful and measurable. This is why you are doing it and how you will know you are done. Meaning is important because it helps motivate you to continue with your goal. Do you want to be better or have better time management because you want to improve your grades? Because you want better work-life balance? Or is it perhaps because others in your life are becoming frustrated by it? The meaningful is important because it helps with motivation. The measurable is also important. How will you know you are done your goal? How will you know it has been accomplished? This is related to the what and the how of a goal. You know what you are doing and how you will achieve it, but how will you know that you are done? How will you know that you have reached your goal? Is your goal met if all, in a, all of your assignments are handed in on time, or is it met if you're consistently on time for meetings? Then lastly, the P in CAMP stands for possible to finish. This refers to the time frame in which you are doing it. Is it possible to achieve your goal in the time frame that you have set? Some notes on getting started. If you are having a hard time getting started on your goal or any tasks in general, try altering the time frame that you set to work on the task. Many people intend to sit and study for a few hours, but find it really difficult to actually start studying or working in the time frame that they set out. 
So if this happens for you, you might want to try altering the time that you are going to spend doing something. A good place to start is by cutting the time in half. Then you can start over and try working in that time frame. For example, if you plan to study for an hour, but an hour goes by and you haven't started studying yet, then try cutting that time down to 30 minutes. If that's still not working, you can reduce that time even further down to 15 minutes. Continue to reduce the amount of time that you plan on working until you find a time frame that works for you. If once you've started and you feel motivated, then go ahead and keep working. Oftentimes starting the task is the hardest part. So once you are started, you might be able to continue on. Once you find a time frame that works for you, it might be useful to continue to schedule the same amount of time the next time you go to work on that task. Another trick that you might want to consider is the five minute rule. You can tell yourself you only have to engage in this task for five minutes. Since five minutes is a relatively short amount of time, it feels less overwhelming and less stressful to start a task of this length. This can usually trick the brain into being motivated and initiating the task. If after five minutes, the task still feels very overwhelming, then you can pause the task and take a break, or you can even consider it done for the day. However, most of the time people find that once the five minutes are up, they feel motivated to keep going. If that's the case for you, then continue on. However, if it's not, be kind to yourself and consider the task on hold or accomplished for the day. Lastly, if changing the time frame is not very helpful, then try breaking the task down into much smaller components. Instead of saying, I need to study, tell yourself, I'm going to review part of chapter three. Instead of saying, I need to write my essay, you can tell yourself, I'm going to update my outline. I'm going to edit the paper, or maybe you're going to write the conclusion. If you are having a hard time keeping up with course readings, then perhaps instead you can try to only read a few pages at a time. Oftentimes when people are struggling to get started with a task, it's because it feels too big. If that is the case, then you can schedule smaller, more manageable goals each day. Now let's talk about how you can go about breaking down large goals. The first step in breaking down a goal is to estimate how much time the project will take. Will it take five hours or will it take 20? Then you need to determine the average hours a week you need to accomplish your goal. If you have a 20 hour task and four weeks to accomplish that task, this means you need to dedicate approximately five hours a week to the task at hand. Be accurate and honest with your time estimation and when in doubt, always give yourself extra time. It's better to have too much time instead of not enough. Remember, it takes a lot of time and effort to plan, research and write an essay. So don't try to do it all in one afternoon. Instead, schedule multiple days that you're gonna work on this. When planning a goal, you also need to think about the materials you will need, the space you will need to work in, and the people that you might need to involve. If you need to involve other people, you're going to need to consider their schedules and their abil abilities. So, for example, if you need assistance from a professor or a TA or even a group member, you need to give them enough time to respond to your request as they have their own schedules as well. The next thing to think about is the individual steps involved in achieving your goal and the sequence that you need to do them in. For example, you need to research a topic before you can write about it. One of the most important aspects of breaking down a goal is creating smaller, more manageable sub goals. Ideally, if it is a long term goal, you can work towards achieving one, maybe two parts of that goal per week. For example, if you're studying for a test, then you might want to schedule when you're going to review each individual chapter and then when you're going to review the quizzes. So in this example here, you can review chapter three on Thursday, chapter four on Saturday, 
and then perhaps you do your quizzes on Monday. Once you broke your large goals into smaller, more manageable sections, then you need to plan how long each section will take and when you will do it. You then want to schedule this in your day timer or organizer. If you don't schedule it and make time for it, chances are it will not get done. Adding it to your day timer increases the likelihood not only that you will get it done, but that you'll actually have the time and the ability to get it done well. One thing I would like to make special note of is staying on task. It is very easy to get sidetracked or distracted when trying to complete a goal. So frequent check-ins are important. Things you can do to help you stay on task can include making sure that the steps in your goal are well sequenced, manageable, and by also grouping similar items together. For example, if you need supplies for a project, then make a list and get them all at the same time. Don't make multiple trips for items as the need for the supplies arise. If you need to go to the library to pick up some resources, do your research and pick up all your books and your sources at the same time. If you need to print out articles, but you don't have a printer at home, make sure you've found all the articles that you might need before going to a printing station. Another way to stay on track is to celebrate each milestone, no matter how big or how small. If you have finished your course outline, then take a break. Rewards can come in all shapes and sizes. So when you complete a milestone, even one as small as creating an outline, you should reward yourself accordingly. This can help you stay motivated and on track. Do not postpone all rewards until the very end of your goal, as that can seem too far away and be rather unmotivating. Examples of rewards can include going for a walk or taking a movement break, taking some time on social media, watching a show or a movie, spending time with friends or loved ones, cooking yourself a nice meal, listening to music, ordering in or reading for pleasure. One thing I want to note though, is that you should not limit care tasks and only use them as rewards. It's important to move, eat, drink and take breaks no matter how productive you have been or what you have accomplished. Here's an example of a goal setting sheet. So writing everything out on a sheet like this helps you organize your goal by encouraging you to reflect on how much time effort and energy you might need to spend on the goal each week. Here is an example of a sub goal sheet. So this will help you break down your large goal into smaller goals and schedule when you are going to do them. So now we're going to go over two different examples on how to break down large goals, such as writing an essay and studying for an exam. I should note that the information provided in these examples does not provide tips on how to write essays, how to study effectively, or even offer any insight on how much time you should spend on either of these goals. Instead, what we are focusing on is how to break down and schedule these types of goals. If you need specific tips on essay writing or exam strategies, please refer to the Academic Success Center on campus. Okay, so here is the first example that we are going to go over. So the first goal is how to, fin or to finish and hand in an essay on time. Okay, so let's say the date for this is April 22nd, 2021, right? And we estimate that it might take you 20 hours to write this essay. So this number might be wildly different for different folks, right? But just consider how much time it's going to take you to write the essay and what the actual requirements of the essay are. Next, you need to think about how many weeks do you have the fin to finish the project. So in this example, we have eight weeks or two months to write the essay. So when you divide 20 hours by eight weeks, that leaves you with 2.5 hours to work on the essay each week. 
The next step is to think about the materials, the space, and the people that you might need to involve when trying to achieve this goal. So materials wise, you're going to need the course syllabus. You need to know what's expected on this essay, what the instructions are, right? Um, if there's further instructions communicated in class or via email or a discussion board, you're going to want to have those too. You're going to want to have the marking rubric so you can be sure to include every aspect that's required in the essay. And then you're likely going to need a laptop or a computer, maybe a charger. You're going to need access probably to the internet and a library database. You're going to need some source or reference materials. You're going to need a word processor on your computer. Maybe a citation guide if you have specific referencing guidelines for your program. And then I always like to include having drinks, snacks, or any other personal care items that you might need. The reason it's important to have these things before you get settled and started on your work is so that they don't distract you. You don't want to sit down to write your essay and think, oh, I need a cup of coffee. Or, oh, my hands are really dry. Maybe I should go get hand cream. If you take the time to organize all these things before you sit down, it'll reduce the amount of interruptions to your study time. For space, you're going to need a quiet space to work, likely a library, home office, cafe of some sort, wherever you can find space to work that you have adequate plugins and internet. And then the next thing you want to reflect on is the people involved. Right, so you're going to be involved. Maybe it's a group essay or writing assignment. You have partners. Maybe you need to involve your professor or a TA or a librarian if you need assistance. Right, maybe you're going to get a friend to edit your paper. They might need to be involved as well. The next step is to create the sub goals. So we want to break the main goal into manageable parts, ideally one a week for each part. And then we want to think about the sequence that we are going to do things in. So A before B before C. I really recommend that you write these steps out on sticky notes and then rearrange the sequence until you get it right and find something manageable for you. Then lastly, you need to schedule when you're going to do each of the different sub goals so that you can make sure to get them done. So an example of breaking down the sub goals, right? over a period of weeks here. Um, so the last two are on the same week. Um, an example of how to do this is maybe the first step in the first week, you're gonna review the syllabus, the instructions and the marking rubric so you are clear on what's expected. Maybe you're gonna review some potential topics and do a little research on those topics to see what's interesting or stimulating for you, right? Then you might want to select your topic and if you need your professor's approval on the topic, you need to send them an email or communicate to them in some way that's your topic. So maybe this will take one and a half hours, maybe you're going to do it in the library, right, and you're going to schedule the date and the time that you're going to do it. Then the next week, maybe you've gotten your topic approval from your professor. If you don't have the approval, you might need to be a little flexible and wait or maybe you need to change the topic. Once you get your topic approval, it might be a good idea to start making an outline, to start doing some research and gathering source materials on the topic, right? Importantly, once you gather more information, you're gonna wanna add that to your outline. The more information you get, the more you should be updating this outline. Then perhaps on week three, you spend you know, more time gathering the rest of your source material and you continue to update the outline. Perhaps now you're gonna think about some of the main arguments or points that you wanna communicate in each section of your paper. When you're done this, you wanna have a check-in. Does the outline as you've created, created it match your marking rubric? Are you including everything that you need to include to get full marks on this assignment? So perhaps that's going to take you two and a half hours and perhaps this time you're working in a cafe. Then week four, let's begin by breaking down and reviewing the source materials. You can make notes as you read and then you can continue to update your outline and main points as you work. So maybe that's going to take you three hours because you're spending a little more time um, and doing some in-depth reading. 
Then the following week, week five, you're going to finish up reviewing all these materials. You're going to finish making your notes and maybe you're going to start on the body of that essay. You're going to start writing out those main points, arguments in more details with some of the references that you have found. Then the next week, maybe you're going to finish up that essay, right? You're going to finish up the body and then you're going to check in. Once you have the body outlined, is each section supported by a main point and does it map on to the rubric? Then after that, the next week, maybe you're gonna spend time writing your introduction and your conclusion. So now the entire paper is written. Then the following week, after you've taken a little bit of a break or time off from it, maybe you're gonna review and edit the essay, right? Maybe that's gonna take you an hour and a half to go through and edit and update the essay. And then, you know, a few days later, that same week, right? So week eight slash nine, you're gonna review the whole essay again, you're gonna hand it in, and then you are going to celebrate being done. So this is an example of how to break down a larger writing project. Right? You don't have to copy this format and you don't have to do it this way, but this is an example of how you break down and schedule the different components of an essay. So now let's move on and maybe talk about how to study for an exam. So we will do it this way. Okay, studying for a final exam, right? That is our goal. We want to complete it by April 9th, right? end of semester. Maybe you've estimated, okay, it's going to take 16 hours to study for this exam, but you've only given yourself three weeks to accomplish this goal, right? So that means you're probably going to have to spend like 5.3 hours a week studying for this exam. So when planning things, make sure that you have that amount of time available each week in the amount of weeks that you have to prepare. Again, we want to think about all the materials. You're going to need a syllabus, textbook, lecture notes, quiz material. Maybe it's a lab exam, so you need your lab notes or associated lab um, items. Maybe you need cue cards or pens and pencil and paper. Uh, maybe you need a highlighter and post-its, just depending on your studying style. You're probably going to need a computer or a laptop, a charger. Maybe you're going to need access to a printer to print out things if it's easier for you to read um, on printed paper instead of on a screen. You're going to want to, again, organize your snacks, your water, and your personal items to reduce distractions. You then want to plan a study space and who's involved. Again, it could be you. Well, it will be you, but then it could be a professor, a teaching assistant. Maybe you're in a study group or studying with classmates or a study buddy. Maybe you need to request time off from work and you need to notify work that you have these exams coming up. And then again, you're going to break each of them or the break the main goal into manageable parts and think about the sequence that you need to do things in. So week one, let's review the syllabus, figure out what is on this exam. Maybe you want to discuss the exam content with your professor or a TA or your study group. And then you want to make a list of everything that you need to study and review. Be super specific. So in this example, we're studying chapters one through six. There's some quizzes we want to review, a midterm, and this time we're fortunate we have a practice exam. So then you want to schedule your study times and book time off work or other activities. If you're involved in sports or hobbies, maybe you need to book time off of that as well. So that's week one. The next week, right, or actually in the same week, since this is only three weeks to do it, we've scheduled um, two study blocks per week. So the first one's on March 22nd and the next one's two days later, March 24th, right? So the second time we're gonna study for two hours as well. We're gonna gather all the study materials and find a quiet place to study. And we are gonna set a very specific goal for this study session, okay? So I usually study by making cue cards. So if this was me, I would say, I'm gonna make cue cards for both chapters one and two today, right? And then the next week, right, kind of study block three, we're going to gather study materials again, but this time we're going to focus on making cue cards for chapters three and four. 
And then our next study block, I'm going to set a very specific goal. And here we're going to do cue cards for chapters five and six. Right. So now we've reviewed all the chapters that we set out. So the following study period, right, um, then maybe I want to set a very specific goal for that study session where I'm going to review the quizzes in the midterm and maybe I'm going to do that practice exam. Once I do that, it might be a good idea for me to make notes of my weaker areas, right? Figure out where I'm struggling and what I need to focus on further. Then week six or study block six, because this is technically week two and a half, I am going to set a very specific goal for that session. Maybe I'm going to review all the cue cards with a specific emphasis on those weaker areas um, that I identified in my last study session. Then the night of the exam, right? Uh, the night of the exam, I'm probably actually not going to study too much. I want to make sure that I have all my exam materials, any references that I can have or bring. I'm going to have organized and packed in my school bag. I'm going to have my pens, my paper, anything that I need. I'm going to make sure to set an alarm so I can get up in the morning. I'm going to lay out my clothing for the next day so I'm not in a rush. I'm going to eat a healthy dinner and I'm going to rest and go to bed early. Then on the final day, right, um, exam day, I'm going to eat a very healthy breakfast. I'm going to leave with plenty of time for me to get to the university on time uh, so that traffic's not a problem, so parking's not a problem, and I know that I can confidently be on time for the exam. Since I'm so early, I will have time to review some of my cue cards, and then I'm going to write my exam, and then I'm going to celebrate. So again, this is just one example of how you can break down studying for a final in a shorter period of three weeks, right? In this example, we have about two or three study periods in each of the three weeks leading up to the exam. We schedule, plan, and then follow through on what we're doing in each study schedule. So that kind of brings us to the end of our video presentation on breaking down large goals. So I thank you for viewing this webinar. Listed on this very last slide here is a link to a survey for your feedback. We greatly appreciate any feedback you might have about this webinar in particular or about the video format of these presentations in general. CCS is always looking for new ways to meet student needs and we value your thoughts and opinions on how to best do that. So thanks again for joining us today and have a great rest of your day.